Uh, welcome everybody and thank you for joining us here today. Uh, we have about 50 people registered for the webinar. Uh, hopefully there'll be a few more people that are joining us and are just coming in late. Um, but either way, we're going to make the um, presentation available to people that were not able to attend today. Uh, and to those of you who would like a copy to, to follow up on any of the links that we share today. So the webinar today, uh, Tips for Adapting Your Business Model in Challenging Times, is the first webinar offered by the KCBIA, and hopefully one of many more to come as we look at new and creative ways to support members and the downtown business community. We've we'll opened this one up to the entire Kamloops business community, uh, and we thank all of you members and non-members for being here today, uh, speakers and non-speakers. Um, our audience today covers uh, a wide spectrum of the Camelot's business community. As we heard uh, early on, as people were logging on, we have people from the health sector, we have a uh, service sector, we have retail, we have food, we have banking. Uh, so a really good mix of people joining us today, and we hope that you will, um, uh, you know, join us in the discussion at the end of the presentation and share your thoughts and and maybe even some stories with us. Next slide, Christine. So just a bit of an outline on what we are going to focus on today. Uh, and this is a team effort, so there's going to be a few of us talking today, um, and hopefully all of you as well at the end of the presentation through your questions that you share with us. Uh, the focus of the webinar is to not take light of the current situation, but to focus on the positive and share positive stories of adaptation uh, and community support during this challenging time. It is about being creative and thinking outside of the box uh, and filling in a community need or, or closing in a gap. So our hope is to encourage others to take the lemons that they've been given and make lemonade out of them. We are all being inundated with information these days uh, and it is somewhat overwhelming uh, and difficult to know where to focus our time and effort uh, in terms of that information. So we are going to highlight some of the key resources available for businesses out there from a provincial and federal standpoint, uh, just to sort of narrow down the, the focus for all of you today. Um, and finally, as I mentioned, we'll have a question and answer period or a bit of a discussion period at the end of the presentation, which will give you an opportunity to share your thoughts, ask questions of the, the presenters or the KCBIA staff and or share your own success stories or challenges through the COVID-19 pandemic. A uh, couple of housekeeping items before we move forward. So Christine mentioned briefly that there is a chat box function at the bottom of your screen. And if you have questions or comments that you would like to share, we will be tracking those. So we would appreciate it if you would write your questions and comments in the chat box as we move along. And we will be answering as many questions as possible <laughs> at the end of the presentation. Those that we're not able to get to, we will follow up with you individually um, at sometime after the webinar. If you can also identify who your question is directed to, uh, that'll make it easier for us to, to direct to that person. Move forward. So our speakers today, um, with the COVID-19 crisis, we are already seeing a shift uh, in consumer and business behaviors. So some of these changes are going to be temporary, um, but some of the shifts will shape the way that we do business for years to come. So we're really, really happy to have two of Kamloops uh, local entrepreneurs here with us today who have had some success in pivoting their business models in a very short period of time to adapt to COVID-19. So David Toms is our first presenter. Uh, we'll give him a proper introduction a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, but David, as many of you probably know, is the owner of Terra Restaurant. His restaurant concept promotes sustainable practices and uh, local food systems through an imaginative and uh, simply delicious dining experience. So David, thank you for being here today. And Samantha Gibson, who 
we really appreciate uh, your time today. Uh, Samantha is filling in for Nikki James, who unfortunately uh, wasn't able to make it today. Uh, so Samantha has jumped in at the last minute to be with us, and we're really excited to hear about what she has done with her business during the COVID-19 pandemic. Samantha owns K-Spin, uh, which is a fitness studio and a unique experience to spin classes in downtown Kamloops on Seymour Street. So thanks, Samantha, again, for being here today. Next slide. So just quickly, uh, I will introduce myself. My name is Marin Luciani. I'm the owner of Meraki Community Planning in downtown Kamloops. And I am a board member for the KCBIA as well. I'm a registered professional planner with the Canadian Institute of Planners. And I'm really happy to be supporting the KCBIA today with what I feel is an important and um, uplifting uh, uh, webinar. So thanks for being here. And thanks for having me. So let's meet the staff behind the webinar today. Uh, we have Carl DeSantis with us today, who's the executive director of the KCBIA. Carl will be speaking throughout the presentation. He brings many years of influential leadership uh, experience to the KCBIA. Uh, he's politically astute, he's business savvy, and he delivers both passion and energy to our downtown. As the ED for the KCBIA, he's the official ambassador and the spokesperson for downtown Kamloops. Next, in the background, we have Samantha D'Souza. She's the events and marketing coordinator for the KCBIA. And she's also the brainchild behind the webinar topic today. So thanks for that, Sam. Samantha is a marketing graduate from Thompson Rivers University. She loves the Kamloops outdoors and spends all her free time either hiking or enjoying the local food scene in Kamloops. And finally, last but not least, we have Christine Beaton. She's the Administrative and Member Services Coordinator for the KCBIA. Uh, Christine has been instrumental in putting the presentation together for the webinar today and making uh, a lot of changes on the fly. So Christine, we really thank you for that. She's also behind the scenes today as our technology troubleshooter. <laughs> Christine is a graduate of TRU with a Bachelor of Fine Arts and she's applying her degree to her role at the KCBIA. So thank you all for pulling this together today. Next slide. Okay, so Carl, I am going to turn it over to you to talk about some of the positive initiatives that are taking place in the downtown today. Thank you very much, Marin. Uh, I'd just like to take a second to echo Marin's earlier comments. Uh, you know, there's a lot of bad stuff going on. If you want the bad news, watch TV. Uh, if you want to hear some really good news, um, let's take a look at what our business colleagues are doing throughout the downtown core. Um, one of the initiatives that has been recently introduced is called uh, Downtown To Go. And, you know, while the front doors uh, for these businesses may be closed, uh, businesses are continuing to support our community and their customers. Uh, proof right there that uh, we have everything you need right here in downtown Kamloops. Um, an initiative uh, advocating for local businesses and operating, I'm sorry, creating ambassadors within our community is the Downtown To Go initiative. Uh, businesses are demonstrating resilience. Uh, we're seeing them adapt to some of these challenging times like they've never had to before. For example, we've seen businesses offering takeout and delivery services. You know, that may not be uh, something that sounds totally unique, but it is for a lot of the businesses that have never gone down that road before, and they've really had to adapt. Um, they've started offering online presence, online shopping, and uh, we've seen opportunities to showcase positive stories and uh, examples of their re resilience. Um, some of these participating businesses, there's many, but some include Main Street. Nikki wasn't able to make it with us today. Rob Krua. Um, Kip Mallory, Jardines is uh, doing uh, some uh, retail as well. Uh, Fresh Slice Pizza. There's many more, and they're all positive stories uh, in recognition of the downtown. Um, maybe move on there, Christine. And there we go. Okay, so this chart breaks down businesses by type or uh, category, I guess. 
Um, the top shaded area reflects the total numbers of the downtown businesses that we've connected with since COVID started uh, in the community. Um, we've been reaching out to connect with businesses to check in, see how they're doing. And although we haven't yet spoken with everybody, um, we've had many meaningful conversations with, uh, with business owners and uh, staff. The green boxes uh, above each of the, uh, the areas represented there are categories. Uh, they represent businesses that are remaining open with modified business models. And uh, of the total numbers, there's about 22 in the dining category, 22 businesses that are still operating modified, whether it's takeout or delivery, things like that. And about 14 retailers are still offering uh, modified uh, services for customers. Um, again, more resilience, uh, examples of resilience there as well. Um, next slide there, Christine. There we go. Um, there are good things happening downtown. Um, you know, some, some of the things that uh, we work with our partners at the city, and we've been able to introduce another parking conversation. Here we go. But we've been able to introduce temporary loading zones. What we've identified is since COVID uh, started and the city lifted parking fees downtown, it created a bit of a log jam in places where we want to keep traffic flowing in front of businesses that are still operating and uh, offering takeout and delivery services. So we've worked with the city to introduce temporary loading zones in a few locations to support this takeout delivery for restaurants that uh, continue to uh, operate. Um, the loading zones are currently uh, in uh, around Mitts, um, Pete's Pasta, Fratelli's. And this is a conversation that I would like to continue and uh, hear some feedback from each of you if there's ideas where we should introduce other uh, loading zone locations, please let me know. There's another uh, initiative that was introduced. And uh, this one, boy, hats off to Pizza Pie, the right side of the screen there, uh, helping the hungry. So they partnered with the Meal Train Kamloops and the Food Policy Council, and they're supporting the Royal Inland Hospital healthcare workers. They're working uh, with donations from the community and providing the staff at the hospital with free pizzas delivered to their homes. Um, Pizza Pie is also supporting the local community, meals to uh, people who can't afford a meal at, the, at this time because of tough times. Um, and they're working, at, working to continue that through community support from donations as well. But there's more, there's more creative uh, um, business models out there. Yvonne, who's on our call right now, she's offering virtual art classes. I don't know that that's gonna make me any better, but, uh, <laughs> Uh, you know what, it's what a fantastic innovation. Uh, health and wellness classes, and uh, we're gonna hear about that in a little while. Mental health, uh, I saw that uh, Healing Spaces Kelsey's here today, and uh, she's offering some uh, conversation opportunities. Um, and then we look at fresh sliced pizza. Now this one is fresh off the, uh, the pizza oven, I guess. Uh, they are working to support the uh, uh, Healthcare Hero Initiative with the hospital again, and they're offering up and delivering 100, 100 pizzas, I believe, tomorrow uh, to the hospital. So uh, just fantastic good news stories. Uh, maybe go to the next screen there, Christine. Please. There we go. I have, but I guess YK it's slow. <laughs> there we go. Okay, YKA Strong. Um, a few weeks ago, several weeks ago, when uh, this crisis first began, um, a group of community leaders representing the BIAs, uh, Community Futures, uh, the airport, the chamber, the city, tourism, Kamloops, got together and we are, have been regularly collaborating and demonstrating a united front from a business perspective, and it's called YKA Strong. The group has been providing frequent, timely information to our communities and committed to identifying resources, opportunities, and trying to stimulate community conversations and pride. Um, the goal is to strengthen these relationships in order that we can all get through these times together. Um, you know, you, there's a website, ykastrong.com, and they're also represented on uh, Instagram. And it's a really good collection of resources, and uh, there's a lot of really interesting things going to be introduced over the next week or two as well. So look forward and uh, keep checking back on that one, please. Um, next screen, please. 
cap team, downtown heroes right there. Um, we've been in an interesting position right now because we don't have a lot of cap resources uh, for a variety of reasons, but we still have a full-time team. We've managed to partner with the city and the vehicle that you see there is a crime prevention vehicle and it is a dedicated vehicle for the foreseeable future for CAP team deployment and patrols. And what that's allowed us to do is keep the, the CAP members safe and maintain safe distances during their patrols. Uh, we've increased our capacity and our visibility and our ability to address safety and social issues not just downtown. So there's a bit of a trade-off. So the city gave this to us, uh, but the trade-off is we're also going to support different areas of the city. For example, Mac Island, uh, and we are in regular or frequent communication with bylaw officers and uh, the RCMP. Um, there we go. We'll move on. Next uh, photo, please. Or next slide. All right. I'm not going to go through all of these, but I'd like to just point out that there's um, a number of key resources, uh, in, at this case at the federal level, and they're changing. They're, like each day we're hearing new messages from the Prime Minister and, uh, and about different support for employees and for businesses. Uh, copies of this presentation will be available for everybody, so you don't have to write all of this stuff down, but uh, just know that um, the federal government has introduce the, these initiatives and we are trying, doing our best to stay on top and um, uh, provide this information to our stakeholders, our businesses downtown. One that I'd like to point out is that top one, uh, CBA, the Canada Emergency Business Account. That one provides interest-free loans. And there was a big conversation about uh, incurring more debt and I do understand, but this one's an interest-free loan to small businesses and not-for-profits um, through your banks. And it's intended for small businesses to um, access some capital, working capital. Um, if, if these loans are repaid prior to the 31st of December, 2022, there's a 25% forgiveness, which is up to $10,000. So, so that's a little bit of good news. Uh, hopefully a bit of a band-aid for some of our colleagues, business colleagues. And then uh, the other one I'd just like to comment on uh, right now is the, uh, the next one down, the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy. This one is providing, intended to provide support for businesses to keep paying or bring back laid off workers, bring them back to work. Uh, the intention is to provide 75% wage subsidy for about 12 weeks, I believe is the number. Um, but the proviso is that uh, revenues for your business must have dropped 30% gross revenue because of COVID. Um, but it's just a way to get people back working. And uh, it may not work for all business models, but it's uh, certainly going to work for some. I won't go through details of all of those, as I mentioned, but uh, know that this information will be shared with you later. Next slide, please. And again, uh, provincial support. Um, there, there's a few things in here that are interesting. Uh, some provincial taxes have been deferred, delayed, or reduced. And um, there's also information available. I know a lot of uh, questions that we've received you know, in regards to staff. What do I do if my staff can't work, if they get COVID, um, if they're uh, scared to come in? And there's a lot of available information that uh, you can access through the province uh, for our requirements and for support that's out there for our employees. And uh, I think that's all I've got for now, Marin. Great, thank you, Carl. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Before we move on to our local case studies, which is what I think everybody is waiting for, uh, we've compiled a few examples of BC businesses that have adapted their business models uh, due to the COVID-19 um, pandemic. The first one here on screen is Persephone Brewery. And this is an interesting example because they are combining a new service uh, with an existing service. So expanding their business model to fill a gap within the community. So they have paired up with the local IGA stores on the Sunshine Coast to offer not only delivery of beer, which a lot of the breweries are doing these days, but groceries as well. So for a, a donation of $10, 
you can get beer delivered to your door or groceries or a combination of both. So the suggested donation is just that, it's suggested so those that are unable to afford the donation don't have to pay anything and those that can help offset the costs uh, to those that can't. Next slide, please. So the next example here, uh, and this reminds me a little bit of uh, Yvonne Reddick's studio and what she's doing. It's sort of a similar example, just a, a different um, uh, business. So this is the, um, the school sewing studio in Courtney, BC, and they are offering online sewing classes to their customers and also offering material free of charge and at cost to those that would like to make masks. And they provided patterns free of charge as well for those that are interested in making masks, either for themselves or, or for somebody in the healthcare industry. Uh, in addition to online classes, they're, off, they're still offering sales of their materials online as well. And what they identified as one of the main bar barriers for them was um, technology. Somebody else mentioned that earlier uh, when we were introducing ourselves. Uh, they were not very tech savvy, so they pulled together a combination of friends and family that were and were able to get an online presence up fairly quickly and easily. Next example. So here we have a consignment furniture store in Westminster, BC. They are still open for business. Uh, they are using the Center for Disease Control website to ensure that they are following all of the requirements that are necessary for businesses that do wish to stay open during this time that are eligible to stay open during this time as well. Uh, so people can still drop off furniture uh, by appointment only. Pre-approval is required. Everything is uh, cleaned. Uh, the staff are um, very diligent in, in making sure that they're following all of the requirements um, of the pandemic. Orders can be taken and paid for by phone and delivery can also be arranged. Next example, please. So our last example, uh, good old Earl's uh, restaurant is jumping on the toilet paper bandwagon. So not only are they offering takeout, but again, this is a, a company that looked at filling a gap within the community um, and expanding on their existing business model. So they're not only providing takeout and delivery of takeout um, through Skip the Dishes, but they've created an online grocery store of sorts. So you can buy any essential grocery items that you may need through Earl's, uh, including soap, and toilet paper, and uh, it can be delivered as well through Skip the Dishes. They also have a meal kit available based on their menu, so they will send you all of the ingredients to make uh, a meal yourself at home. And some of the Earl's restaurants are also having a midday happy hour. So moving right along uh, to our local case studies, as I mentioned earlier, we're very pleased to have David and Samantha here with us today, uh, taking the time out of their days to share their success and some of their challenges uh, with us. I'll start with you, David. David comes from Terra Restaurant. He's the chef and the owner. He opened Terra in 2011 with his wife, Andrea, to share their love of the incredible bounty of our region. Since then, David and his team have rolled out 100 monthly menus to showcase the seasonal ingredients um, that we are fortunate enough to work with here in Kamloops and the surrounding region. He was a founding board member of Farm to Chef, which is a nonprofit that aims to strengthen and celebrate ties between uh, farmers, uh, restaurants, uh, and local food producers. He has taught at TRU and remains a strong supporter of food-related education and security, food security through work with the farmer's market, the school district, and other nonprofits. So David, thanks again for being here today, and I'm going to turn the stage over to you.
just waiting to see the uh, green outline go on your side and come over my side. <laughs> All right, I had uh, four things I wanted to uh, to address today. Um, or four different topics. Uh, they're all kind of interconnected, so bear with me as I kind of ramble through these. Um, one was the difference between um, uh, an adjustment or an adaptation and an actual pivot. And um, we kind of looked at the um, opportunities that COVID presented and, and took a, a kind of a service approach to it. So our thought was, hey, people don't necessarily want to have a super fine dining experience in their home. Um, that's something that you know, we curate a little bit better in the restaurant. Um, so what do they need? Um, our thought was that family style meals made more sense, uh, volume made more sense. And so rather than simply adjust our menus to, you know, go in a takeout box and get sent home with people, um, we actually kind of completely revamped our menu idea and um, started producing things on a larger scale in a more casual way. Um, a little more family and value focused. So that was our initial response and, and, um, and feedback and um, an uptake on that was really positive. So um, that seemed to work, seemed to be the right thing at the right time. It's funny though that as we've moved along, uh, we're now, um, I think we're in our fourth week now of doing takeout. Uh, we're getting lots of pushback from our regular customers about, hey, can you bring back this menu item or could I have this or whatever? So. I feel like the um, uh, boredom of isolation is, is starting to set in a little bit and folks are wanting some familiarity or, or a little treat, something like that. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is um, new realities for restaurant. And I'm, I'm going to pull out my crystal ball for a moment and say, um, you know, there's 50 restaurants in the downtown core three to six months from now. I'm not sure that we'll see 50 to 60 restaurants. If we do, um, it, it'll be great. Um, but I think that we're all going to probably step back from this and have a really good hard look at uh, what is needed in the marketplace, what are the opportunities, what does our experience going through this um, mean to people who want to dine out on a more regular basis, uh, what's the economic impact, uh, what's the disposable income, and and then how do we position ourselves to to respond to that so i think there's a lot of cause for reflection certainly in the um food service side of things uh, and i'm sure that applies to lots of other small business um, but it's going to be a really good time to sit back evaluate determine um, assess and then build opportunity out of that um, and then look at where we where we go, as I say, three, four, five, six months from now. One of the things that's um, been keeping us going and, and that's been really encouraging is all of the partnerships and collaborations that have formed um, almost seemingly um, without any great initiative. Um, we've been part of three or four different initiatives where um, diners have come in and, and picked up a meal and then done the same at another restaurant over the course of a few days, and then been entered into a draw to, um, to win a gift card. Or um, some of that spending, some of that local spending has spurred donations to the food bank, for example, or um, meals that have been kind of paid forward to frontline health workers. Um, these things seem to be popping up almost on a weekly basis uh, without a whole lot of initiative or, or um, energy from, from us. So we're really encouraged to see that. Um, that is one of the things that um, I think has kept us going uh, as well as we have been. Uh, the energy from those, those collaborations and partnerships are key. And um, uh, I think that, you know, if, if you're not participating in those kind of things and, and uh, you're, you're noticing them in other sectors, there's probably opportunity to start that kind of thing and, and uh, take advantage of that. The last area I wanted to talk about was digital and virtual business. Um, we've been fortunate to um, collaborate with um, Jesse Faubert from Avenue Media, who fortunately is right next door to us here, <laughs> um, on some virtual cooking classes. So um, in um, mid-March, we were slated to do another um, session of cooking classes. We had 
dates booked and six weeks worth of classes and you know suddenly had to suspend those i um so i reached out to jesse and i said hey how can we how can we do something positive for the community how can we give them something fun to to watch uh in the meantime and how can we perhaps share some cooking class ideas and so we've shot a couple of classes so far we shared one of them the other ones in the bag if you will um waiting to be released and um and I think we're going to continue to do some more of those things. And we may look at those as actually a, uh, a revenue generator at some point in time down the road. But certainly the feedback has been spectacular. And uh, it seems that uh, people are, are willing um, and perhaps have the time to be more engaged in those kind of online things. And um, yeah, it's been really encouraging to see, uh, see some, so much positive feedback around that. Um, that media. So um, my thanks to Jesse for helping out with that and, and jumping on board. Um, and I'd suggest that he's a good resource for people if you're looking to um, look at some digital options for your business that you could deliver. So um, shameless push there, Jess, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a great experience. So um, let's see. I wanted to kind of wrap this all up with a little um, Kind of synopsis, I guess, of of uh, the situation. And um, I'm missing Nikki's energy today. I'm sorry she's not able to be with us. So I'll I'll try and jump in and provide some positive light that she might have otherwise shared with us. Um, you know, moving forward and trying to adapt as well as um, provide positive kind of examples of what can be done. Um, certainly does help cast um, some optimism and hope um, around this whole situation. You know, as Carl was mentioning, if you just watch the news and it, it's easy to get caught up in the, in the drama and, and the um, kind of gray cloud that, that sits over this. But, um, you know, as entrepreneurs or small business people, I think that adaptation and identifying opportunities um, and moving forward on those kinds of things are what we do best. So um, I think it's really important that we try to A, share resources, um, B, share success stories and, and find um, good common ground where we can work together um, and keep moving forward. Keep identifying ways that, uh, that we can make things better um, in whatever way that, that seems appropriate for your business. And um, yeah, it would be much easier to come out of the other side of this if we do that. So. Marin was coaching me on time there. So how am I doing, Marin? <laughs> sure, am I unmuted? Okay, yeah, I'm unmuted. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, no, uh, thank you, David. That was really, really interesting to hear. I have a couple of questions, follow-up questions for you before we turn it over to Samantha, just like on a couple of things you said. Um, so first of all, I wanted to ask, uh, so we know that you were looking at moving locations uh, in the next few months, and I was wondering how the pandemic has impacted um, your move, if you could speak to that. And then the second question, um, you just mentioned something related to moving forward. Um, and I was wondering what made you decide to stay open and take the challenge on in terms of adapting your business instead of uh, taking advantage of some of the incentives that are out there um, for small businesses right now? Okay. Um... Let me deal with the relocation thing first, which is a, an interesting one. Um, so we've, we've had a number of um, opportunities that we've been looking at over the last little while. Um, most of those things we've kind of put on hold at this point. Um, and some of them are within our control, some are not. Uh, but I think that this is a bit of a silver lining for us and that um, we're gonna be able to sit on the sidelines for a little bit. Um, do some work uh, in collaboration with some other local businesses who um, we work closely with and and just sit back and kind of see how things play out a little bit. So for the time being, at least, um, we're not going to move forward with a, a firm relocation plan. 
Um, we're going to kind of keep our options open and try to determine um, what this looks like on the other side. So it'll be a good time for reflection. And with respect to the second question, <laughs> um, it wasn't much of a decision, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, the restaurant, we began the restaurant with the idea that we were going to try to um, showcase great food, serve the community. Um, we didn't hesitate at all about, um, about just remaining open and trying to provide a service, um, trying to identify a need in the marketplace and provide a service. Um, to be honest, you know, I don't think we even really investigated the possibility of, of sitting on the sidelines. So, um, and that is just kind of the mindset I think that we've, we've had from day one here. So, um, yeah, wasn't, wasn't too much of a consideration for us. Great. Thank you. So moving right along, next slide, please, Christine. So next we have Samantha Gibson from K Spin. So Samantha is the owner of the Spin Studio in Kamloops on Seymour Street. It's Kamloops first Spin Studio. Uh, Samantha started teaching Spin in 2014 after giving birth to her daughter and moving to Penticton. It was an opportunity to integrate herself into the community and also get back in shape after her pregnancy. She opened K-Spin here in Kamloops in November 2017 after moving to Kamloops uh, earlier the same summer. Mm -hmm. The vision of K-Spin is to create a happy, uplifting space where you can come to work out, increase your overall well-being, and meet like-minded people. So Samantha, once again, thank you very much for being here today, and I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me today. Is that working? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. You can hear me. Perfect. Okay. You can hear me because my thing's not switching. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so thank you for having me today. Um, I think that, you know, in these times, it's really a difficult time everyone's isolating at home um, and losing that sense of community and really when we were in the early stages before things got serious enough that we had to close, um, we did have quite a few of our members ask us what's going to happen if you guys close, like we don't want to lose this, we feel like we're making such great progress, or this is our outlet, um, can we rent a bike? So that the, the members kind of like had put it in my head um, that, you know, maybe this would be a great way to pivot our business if indeed we did have to close. Um, and then when the news kind of started to get worse and more serious, we do thankfully have a doctor on staff um, who is a spin instructor as well. So I had reached out to him and just asked his opinion on what he thought we should do. And he did think it was the best decision for us to close our doors. So we took a day, well, I took a day and kind of mourned the closing of the doors. And then within the next day, um, we had so many of our clients reach out to us asking about renting bikes. Our instructors approached us about leading classes. So it just seemed like a really easy decision to let our bikes go out to our members and try to find a way to pivot and get our classes online so we could still maintain that sense of community and give people that outlet that maybe they really need, especially when things get really stressful. So I, that, that would be my community pillar, um, that definitely having the community support behind us has been huge. Um, obviously, you know, you need a spin bike to participate in the classes. Um, so we have had a huge amount of support and our wait list just keeps growing daily for people trying to get bikes. So Delray from Ladies um, Only Fitness, she actually let go of seven of her bikes to our members too. So we were able to grow our online community a little bit bigger um, and get more people on bikes with us. 
So that would lead me into my next, the business to business connection. Um, pre COVID-19, we did have a very strong relationship with Bar Kamloops and Yoga Now offering combined memberships to within our communities. Um, so that's also been a great resource for me um, to offer to our clients who don't have bikes to give those other studios that are in town that are doing classes that don't need any equipment and are offering ways to get sweaty and stay connected with those ways as well. I would say my, our biggest, um, well, my biggest struggle um, through this would definitely be, I'm not a tech savvy girl. That has never been my forte. I'm good on the bike and I'm good with music. That's about my skills as far as technology. So we have um, had to kind of shift where we were offering our classes. We did start offering them on through Instagram live um, which was great, I, but our music was um, not cooperating with the Instagram Live. So the copyright issues of the music, we were having issues with that. So we have now switched and we're doing them via Zoom. Um, however, MindBody is now, so MindBody is the software that we use to book all of our classes online. Um, and they're actually pivoting their entire business model to offer live classes to all their studios and to have all their classes pre-recorded as well. Um, so we're able to have our live classes, well, we will be able to hopefully within the next week or two, have our classes just through one platform. So rather than have to go through MindBody and then Zoom, you'll be able to just do everything through MindBody as well as have a library of pre-recorded classes. So moving forward, when we are able to open our doors again, um, that is something that we're gonna keep. We're gonna keep kind of building our online library of classes. So if people aren't able to come to the studio or um, I know a lot of moms struggle with finding care for their children to make it to a workout class. We'll be able to offer an online component as well as um, have our, hopefully our doors open sooner than later. Wonderful. Am I unmuted? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Samantha. So I was just going to ask you if this was something that you were planning on um, continuing after COVID settles down. So it's great to hear that this is something that is, uh, you know, potentially positive um, for you and is a good expansion to your business. Is this something that you think you would have considered the online presence um, had COVID not become an issue? I don't think so. I had had people reach out to me and ask if this is something that we would have done before. Um, and I don't, I don't think I would have necessarily done it. Um, however, now seeing how, you know, how things can change so quickly, I do think it is really important. And I also think that online community that we've been able to build and continue building for however long this will last, we'll be able to at least foster that and keep it going. Great. So my, my next question before we turn it over to the group is actually for both you, Samantha and David, just wondering how uh, the adapted business model has impacted your staffing levels. So Sam, if you want to answer first and then we'll turn it over to David. Um, so. I would say our staff is still, I mean, we still have all of our instructors on staff. Um, not everybody is currently teaching. I mean, we went from having five classes a day and now we are just offering one. Um, but our instructors are taking this opportunity. If they're not teaching any live classes, they're pre-recording classes and we're working on building that library up 
for when we can share it on my body. Great, thank you. David. Yeah, we're down from about 10 to three um, employees right now. Um, of those three, one's full-time and the other two are part-time. Um, mostly Andrea and I'm running the business at, at this point along with one full-time staff. Great, thank you. So I think we will, oh, great, we're already on that slide. Thank you, Christine. So moving ahead with our question and answer period, I see there's a few questions trickling in. So please, anybody, if you do have a question, a comment or something that you'd like to share, um, we can also unmute you if you'd just like to share an experience from your own business uh, or a challenge or, or success from your own business. So um, some of the things to think about, um, first of all, obviously, if you have any questions for David or Samantha, uh, if you have any questions for KCBIA staff, um, what advice you might be able to offer the, the business community that's online with us today, um, what business challenges you've potentially overcome during the crisis, and we're also interested in learning about future webinar suggestions as this is something that um, we may be looking at continuing in the future as a, another way to support our, our membership. So I'm going to throw out the first question that's come from the group and then we will go from there. Uh, so first question uh, comes from Ryan and his question is for David. David, what are some of the initiatives or actions on the digital front that you would have loved to have had in place prior to the pandemic? Hmm. Uh, Pay-per-view cooking classes would have been great to have in the bag, like ready to roll. That would have been smart. <laughs> um, I think, um, you know, an online ordering system um, might have made a lot more sense as well. We toyed with the idea of doing groceries such as Earl's has done. We were approached by a, a distributor um, in town who was interested in um, collaborating and doing that. And, and I shied away from that. I was concerned that I wouldn't have enough staff to, to do that. And I was concerned, frankly, about um, the number of hands that would be um, involved in assembling uh, packages with multiple components. Um, so I, that was kind of a safety concern. I didn't want to go there. Um, what else from a digital standpoint? Um, we're kind of only working with, um, with Facebook and Instagram right now. And, um, I would have, uh, I would have liked to have had a website up and running and possibly, um, uh, look at ways to easily adapt that. So I'd, I'd want a site that was, um, uh, easily adaptable from an owner operator standpoint rather than having to work through a, another company um, where I can make changes that were tailored directly to uh, the needs of our guests. Um, I'm just thinking about messaging around um, safety and um, precautions we were taking, security things, um, just to make people feel comfortable. And um, if, if there's one thing that, you know, I've kind of gathered in the last month or so is that, um, you know, reassuring words, um, caution, um, security, taking kind of um, ever increasing kind of steps at um, making sure that people feel comfortable and safe and, and that there's a, a good trust factor um, have been really critical to um, maintaining some level of, of uh, business operations that, you know, are, are semi, I, I don't want to use the word sustainable. Um, <laughs> some level of business. Great, thank you, David. Uh, next question is for Samantha, and it's from Christine. How do you generate income from the online classes, or is this something that you're looking at doing in the future? Um, so right now, all of our classes we are offering for free. Um, and then that's something in the future we will look at once we kind of um, are able to move everything through mind body um, we'll look at that great thank you 
Uh, this question is for both David and Samantha. Have you been able to find new clients uh, during the pandemic? And if so, how did they find you? So we'll start with you, Samantha. So we've actually had people tune in from the UK, from Australia, and just through, um, I believe that they found us through Instagram. So that's been really cool. And then, then hopefully once we establish more of an online presence through MindBody and have those pre-recorded classes, hopefully that's something that we're able to work on building our online community out even more. Great, that's exciting. Yeah. David. Um, I think the new clientele, we've, we've got a good established um, group of, of guests who you know, have been coming to the restaurant for nine years. And so they've been kind of the core of our support, but we have seen a lot of new faces um, that have come to us through the various uh, contests and promotions and um, activities that are going on online. And so um, that's where we've seen some fresh faces. Great, thank you, David. I have a question for Carl here. So we've talked a little bit about the fact that uh, the KCBIA is exploring the virtual world and is potentially looking at offering uh, additional web webinars to members in the future. Um, tell us a little bit about that and um, why, why you're, you're pursuing that. Yeah, membership engagement uh, for, from the business to businesses um, is paramount for us downtown. You know, I think we've come a long way in the last few years to uh, supporting this engagement from uh, to get to know your neighbors. And we were really making big strides just before this COVID uh, challenge uh, we're, we're faced with right now. And we were doing a lot of uh, planning for and offering face-to-face -face presentations and webinars in our boardroom and other locations. We've had other networking opportunities. Going forward, technology, you know, we've learned a lot over the last few weeks about uh, how this is it's quite frankly, it's an opportunity to connect anywhere we are. And when I hear stories uh, about people connecting from uh, Australia, that, that's absolutely remarkable. <laughs> from the KCBIA perspective, we don't need to reach out that far. But going forward, I really, really like to see um, more engagement, uh, things that we can do to support our businesses at this level, and then get back to face to face, whatever that looks like uh, in the weeks to come or months to come when, uh, when things settle down. Um, I, I would really appreciate this group of, uh, well, we've got 22 right now. Um, any feedback that you've got? This is the first time we've done this. Uh, and I'm not going to lie, it's a bit out of our comfort zone. We've learned a lot putting this presentation together. Uh, but any ideas, suggestions, requests going forward, what can we do? We, the KCBIA, do for you through webinar development or not webinar development web, webinar um, online uh, business development opportunities presentations seminars networking um, whatever it happens to be but what can we do to just keep things going uh, for you and your business and you know when when I think uh, think about the uh, the end of the, the line when we can start getting out of post COVID uh, um, I, I think it's really important to start thinking about recovery. Now isn't the time to implement it. It's time to start thinking about it. And that may include or should include uh, business development, staff development. So let us know. I'm, I really want, it, it's not up to us. It's up to you, our business community, what we can do for you. Great. Thank you, Carl. We have two minutes left and we have, Looks like two more questions. I don't see any more coming in the chat um, box, but please, if you do have any last minute questions, please type them in now. Uh, the first question I have here is for David. Uh, can you talk about the Farm to Fresh or Farm to Chef initiative and how that has changed during the pandemic, if at all? Sure, I'm not sure whether you're referring to the initiative that um, we launched a couple of weeks ago to encourage people to visit um, a series of local restaurants and then get entered into a draw to win a gift card or um, farm to chef initiatives in general. 
I think they're referring to farm to chef initiatives in general. So that example you're referring to would be a, a, a good one. Okay. <laughs> uh, in addition to that, um, I guess uh, the one major thing that um, people might want to be aware of is that um, we have uh, postponed or canceled our, uh, our traditional summer grazing event uh, that was slated to happen in June. Um, we just felt it was too close at this point to, uh, you know, potentially gather 300 people together on a farm and uh, <laughs> somewhere in the, in the community. Um, so, tentatively, we're looking at postponing that date. Um, that's still under discussion and we'll kind of make those decisions as we, uh, as we get more clarity about where we come out of this. Great, thank you. Uh, did you want to just briefly touch on the, the new initiative that's been launched? N not right now. Okay. <laughs> Okay, last question. This one is actually for Yvonne Reddick. Um, you're in the process of pivoting your business as well. What are some of the local resources you have used? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I actually met a young woman who has her own online business development business. And she, um, she said uh, she'd been looking for a way to give back. Um, and she said, I want to help you. So she has gifted me with a coaching package of six weeks meeting with her on Zoom once a week um, to help me get everything set up, um, which is amazing. And I, like Samantha, have had some people from around the world. So before the pandemic, I had people who had found me online and got in touch with me through social media from the UK and South Africa and Australia and asked me to teach online. And I thought, oh, someday I want to do this. So they said, let us know when you do this. Um, there's a woman in PEI who has signed up for some lessons, but I, I divert, I'm not answering. So locally, um, I heard David talking about Jesse to do with um, some digital work. I'd be interested in getting in touch with him. And the woman who is helping me with the business online is Gina Tallarico in Kamloops. Does that kind of answer the question? Yes, thank you, Yvonne. That's great to hear that there's uh, local resources out there as well and everybody is banding together to, to support each other, whether it be local, on the local scene or internationally. So lots of good news stories coming out of COVID-19 as, well as, uh, as well as the negative. So thank you. Uh, last question, and it's for Carl, and uh, then we'll wrap things up since we're two minutes over. Carl, you say it's safe to market the downtown. What is the investment you have ready for that? You know what? Uh, we have got an incredible technology marketing plan. Uh, you know, and this is more of a Samantha question, but uh, I can dive right into that. And it's about telling our own story, about celebrating our successes. Uh, you know, I started this presentation off today um, acknowledging that bad news is everywhere and we don't need to share bad news. Uh, we are looking for opportunities to share, share and celebrate good news stories going forward. Uh, and, and, you know, telling our own story about some of the business uh, successes and how they've been resilient. Um, there are going to be so many opportunities to re-engage with our customers and uh, bring people back downtown and reignite the fire that we had. So I'm, I'm, we're, as a team, we are really looking forward to doing this and we, we talk about it a lot. And um, trust us, when, uh, when we are able to invite people back down, they're coming back down. Great, thank you, Carl. I think that's an excellent note to end on. Uh, I wanna thank everybody for taking the time to join us today. I hope that you saw some value in the webinar and that you will keep in touch with us, as Carl said, and give us some ideas for future opportunities, whether it's webinars or other ways that we can support you, um, whether it's now or, or post COVID. Uh, thank you to David and Samantha, especially, for taking the time to share their success stories. And to all of you that 
um, asked questions of, of either the two or, or Carl today. So Carl, any last words you wanna share before we close it up? Well, you know what, I'd like to first of all say thank you to you, Marin, uh, for doing this and uh, standing up to facilitate. You've done a fantastic job for, uh, for everybody. Thank you. For uh, Samantha and Christine, uh, thank you for everything you did to develop this. Uh, I, I know it's outside our comfort level and I know I push hard, but thank you. It's uh, great results. And uh, again, echoing your comments, Marin, David and uh, Samantha, thank you for stepping up and uh, particularly Samantha, because you only had a couple of hours notice. So thank you. Um, <laughs> KCBIA, we really do understand that uh, these times are extremely difficult and stressful. Uh, financial hardships are significant. Um, you know, we're, we're not going to uh, share news articles. You want news, you can find it anywhere. But we're working to provide current resources and uh, information that is of value to you as business leaders. Um, please reach out to myself, anybody on our team, the board, if there's anything we can do, if you have any questions, suggestions, stay positive, stay healthy, stay in touch. And I wanna leave you with one parting thought. Hugh Hefner, we all know who Hugh Hefner is. He became a multimillionaire staying at home in his pajamas. <laughs> now, I'm not having quite the same success, but you know, try to see this as an opportunity. And, uh, you know, if you're a fisherman and your net is broken, <laughs> you're going to fix that net in the off season. There's a lot you can do to enhance your business. And uh, please, as we do this, share these stories so we can celebrate with you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.